Good morning, everybody. We are here this morning um, at 5 a.m. and we are again in our Bibles every day. I think we're going on almost five months of getting in the Word every day and just seeing what the Lord has for us today. And today we're going to talk about dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. So we're going to be in um, Psalms 13, but it's going to lead us into a, a a truth. <laughs> this, of course, because it's the Bible, but it's going to lead us into this secret place of God, this secret understanding. Good morning, Michelle. I'm so excited about what we have today, what the Lord's given us. I just kept writing and kept writing, and I just am excited. So Psalms 13, 1, um, it, and we're just going to be in the one verse in Psalms 13. It says, How long will thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? Hi, Connie. Good morning. And so David, we're in the book of Psalms, learning how to get closer to God. And David is saying, how long are you going to forget me, God? He's in a position to where he feels completely forgotten that the Lord's not seeing him. He's not hearing him. And he's wondering how long. And in the book of Revelation, we know the martyrs, they stand around the throne and they go, how long? How long? And that seems to be the cry of our heart is how long, God? How long? Um, and, and so if we go to Psalm 91, um, one, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Sometimes when we're crying out, how long, it can seem as though we're forgotten when we're actually hidden. When we're actually in the secret place of the, the, of the Most High. We're, we're under the shadow of his wing. We're, we're being, um, brooded over and loved over. Good morning, Anita. And it seems like God's forgotten us because we're so close to him that it's like we're one with him. Hi, Heidi. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to abide in the Lord and he abides in us. And that closeness, maybe we can almost forget that he is um, watching out over us and moving for us. Good morning, Lori. Um, and so I have a word that from that I just wrote. I just wrote what I heard. Amen. And so here's the word. Your identity is not in what you do. Your identity is found in me. And I'm the one who says you are, I, uh, who says who you are. Okay, so this is not me. I'm just writing what I feel the Lord's stirring in me um, for us this morning. And he says, um, I spoke you at the beginning of the world and before the birds sang and the stars shone. Shone. That's a hard word. Shone. <laughs> and you existed first in my thoughts. Oh my goodness. So we know favorite verse. I know the thoughts I think towards you. And the Lord is telling us today that before you existed on earth, you existed in my thoughts. We existed in the mind of God before he created us here. And so our identity is not in what we do. It is in who we are in him. And he's the one who says who we are. He spoke it at the beginning of the world. Before the birds sang, before the stars were shining in the sky, God was thinking about us. And it says, um, or it, he says, the salvation of man became so important to me. It was my number one focus. I had many things I wanted to accomplish, but people were always my priority. Make people your priority and you cannot fail. Love them in su into submission to me. Love always wins. I feel like that's a word from the Lord. I don't know if y'all like to journal, but man, I just want to hear what's in the spirit. And I hear the Lord saying, your first existence was not um, when you recognized yourself. It wasn't when somebody else recognized you. It wasn't when you found your calling and you started walking in it. It wasn't the first time you went to church. It wasn't even, you know, the first time you prayed a prayer. Your existence happened before the world was created because it happened in the thoughts of God. Good morning, Jennifer. That is such a, oh my goodness, I don't know why it seems so profound, and it's probably like, oh yeah, that's obvious, but just to think that the Lord thought on us when he created 
earth. He created what the earth was going to be like. He thought about us and thought, I need, I need someone here. I need someone to do this. I need someone who will bring this into the world. I need someone who will, um, you know, sacrifice for me and love me and care about me. And I think I'm going to create a Jennifer. I'm going to create a Lori and an Anita. I'm going to create a Connie and a Heidi and, and Michelle. I'm going to create. And God created us. And, and I was thinking about hiding under the shelter of his wing. And it made me think about a baby bird. And, you know, birds just, they kind of hide under their, their mothers. They can't fly. They can't go anywhere. They're just hiding um, for protection and for food. And this is how you know a baby bird is hungry. is <laughs> because um, they make a noise, just like all babies. When they're hungry, they make a noise. They can't go get it. They can't do anything for themselves. They're just crying out, hoping that that mother will respond and feed them. And I'm just thinking, the Lord is so attentive that when we are hiding, let me read that, dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We are abiding under His shadow. We are completely dependent on Him. And we are crying out and making noises and praying and, and worshiping and believing and doing all these things. Just stirring up the Lord's attention towards us. Because we need Him. We're needy. <laughs> I keep saying that. David in the book of Psalms says, I'm needy. And we're like baby birds, and we need the Lord um, to sustain us and to move for us. And the Lord knows when we're getting restless. Moms know when their kids are getting restless. They know when something's up, right? And the Lord knows when you are getting restless, when you need that next thing to sort of push you forward, to push you deeper into the call of God, to get hungry for Him again, and, and to stir up that first love again. He knows that. And He is tuned into our movements while we are waiting. So those who wait on the Lord, right? And those who dwell in the secret place, we wait and we dwell and we believe and we hope and we just keep stirring up God's favor and his attention towards us but his attention was already on us before we even took shape before our you know dna came into place good good morning joel before our um thoughts and our actions our personality and our character before all the things that we think make us made us it was the lord thinking on us and so Baby birds need to be fed every 15 to 20 minutes in daylight hours. That's a lot. That's a lot of stirring. That's a lot of crying out. That's a lot of, you know, trying to get their mother's attention. And, and that's a lot of hoping that that food's going to come around. And that, that mother bird is busy, busy trying to quiet those noises. Y'all can imagine that. Those baby birds with their mouths wide open and they're just like, yearning for food all the time and if we think about the lord he has food for us all the time how often are we saying feed me i need that food i need that spiritual food i need something inside of me stirred up again turn me again oh god turn me again turn me again and those birds are every 20 minutes it's like they're starving <laughs> and we we have a table set before us the word of God, the things of God, but not just the things of God. Actually, the Lord opens his heart to us. He opens up his character. He opens up his thoughts. He opens up the way he does things and just who he is. And I'm so interested in that. And I know you are too. We're just interested in who God is. And, and we're crying out. And so... There's somebody in, in the Word that I think is, is interesting. Amen. It's Mark 15, 42 through 47. And this is Joseph of Ar Arimathea. Um, I, I looked it up how to pronounce it, and I already kind of forgot because I thought I would never pronounce it that way. And so I'm just going to pronounce it how I probably would just normally do it. Um, it. Okay, and so it says, And now when the evening was come, because it was the preparation that is the day before the Sabbath. So Jesus was dead on the cross, 
and Pilate still has his body. And so Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly into Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead, and calling into him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. Here's what I love about Joseph. Joseph was a, a an honorable counselor. He was busy. He had um, a job to do. People depended on him. You know, he had to maintain his character, his reputation, make good decisions. It mattered what he said. It mattered how he treated people. He had a lot to think about. And God had put a lot on his plate, a lot of responsibility. But he also waited for the kingdom of God. I don't know why those two things come together in one person. It is so beautiful. All this care and concern for others, you know, care about people, but also waiting on the Lord. And and he waited for the kingdom of God. But you know what he did? When Jesus was dead... He saw an opportunity to help the kingdom of God. The Savior, the one he believed in, he didn't think it was right for them to um, crucify Jesus. He was against that. It happened anyways. And he could have been really bound up in his pride and thought, you know what, I'm a counselor. Things didn't go my way. Things didn't happen the way I thought they should have happened. And I just need to shut the door and walk away from this whole thing. He could have gotten really offended. But he was also, that's who he was. He was that counselor. But he was also waiting on the kingdom of God. And so that spirit, man, that that spirit moving in the spirit took over and he thought i've got work to do there's something here for me to do and and he got the body of jesus he craved that body because god had put that unction on him if you're waiting for the kingdom of god i need you to move you're waiting on on things that could take place i need you to be a part of that and i need you to crave this dead body when everybody else thinks it's over and it's done with i need you to keep moving forward because there's something that other people don't know there's something people don't know about what i'm doing about my thoughts now jesus told them all jesus told them what was going to happen but it's like when it happened they forgot and, and so you know Joseph could have been like, this is over and done. I'm washing my hands and walking away. But God stirred him because he was hiding um, under the shelter of the Almighty. He was waiting for the kingdom of God. And so verse 45 says, And when he knew it was of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And he bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a scepter which was hewn out of a rock and rolled a stone into the door of the scepter and mary magdalene and mary the mother of um, joseph beheld where he was laid okay he did one of the most important things in in the in the bible and so mary you know mary came in and she worshiped jesus and people gave her a hard time about it. Not everybody, but, you know, Judas gave her a hard time about it. And thought, oh, she's wasting all this. She should be giving this money to the poor. And they just were really, you know, ugly to Mary. She's a sinner. But Jesus said, she's wrought a good work on me. She's preparing me for the day of my burial. And here Joseph is, and it looks like things are over, but God stirred him up to get that body and put that body in a new tomb with a big rock because that's going to be really important. Nobody else knows it, but it's going to be really important. And, um, you know, when Mary, the Marys came and, and they go to um, uh, minister to the Lord after he's dead and, and they see that the rock is rolled away and the linen is there and Jesus is gone and there's an angel that says, you know, he is risen like he said. All these people play a part in salvation. And I think that is what the Lord is telling us today is that he puts people first. He had a plan of salvation. He, the whole reason God dwelling among us was for the people. And he used those people to achieve that need. And, and every single person had something that they needed to do. But every single person that was doing something, it appeared as though what they were doing was not necessary and was not right. And it was past time and you just need to move on. 
Do, do y'all get what I'm saying here this morning, friends? Is that what God is asking you to do in the kingdom while you wait on the kingdom will seem like it's not necessary to the kingdom. Does that make sense? Do you get it? Because what Joseph was doing, yeah, somebody's got to bury this body, but only Joseph had the anointing and the unction to go and to pilot the most important person there, um, you know, in the realm of man, he was the most important, went to Pilate, who just allowed this innocent man to be crucified. Obviously, he only would stand up for someone so much. And then he'd just be like, well, okay, have your way. He went to Pilate and, and said, I need that body. There's something I've got to do. I don't understand it. I don't get it, but I need it. And God is calling you, and there's something you've got to do. You don't understand it, but you know you need to do it. You don't get the big picture, but you know it's important. Joseph did not understand the what he was doing. He was putting the Savior of the whole world in the place where he would overcome death. And he had bought that tomb a long time ago. He had had that tomb waiting for his own death. And Jesus asked him to sacrifice that for him. And because he did, God used him to accomplish a miracle. God it wants to use you to accomplish a miracle, and he might already be doing it. And you may not even see the big picture, but just hold firm, be steady, keep going, keep doing what he's pressing on you to do, and keep believing that there is an outcome that is so miraculous, so spectacular, that it's beyond anything you could have thought of. But it's your simple obedience when you are hiding and you are waiting in that place with God where you are so close to God, and the whole time you're crying out saying, I need food, I need food, but the Lord is saying, you're already moving in things you don't know anything about. You're doing things for the kingdom of God. You think it's just regular everyday stuff, but it is a miraculous move of God on the face of the earth. And you think it's just normal. I need food. I'm hungry. God feed me. Yeah. The Lord is talking to us today that your identity Listen, I'm going to say it again. Your identity is not in what you do. Your identity is found in Him. The waiting and the abiding and the hiding in Him. That is when God can use you the most. That is when you are being used the most is when you have no idea about it. Amen. You have no idea about it. Was it as Peter that walked by people and his shadow? Oh, oh, uh, Lord, you preached on that the other day. His shadow raised the dead. And he was just walking down the street. He was just getting somewhere else. Listen, on your way to get somewhere else, God is using you for miracles. They are unfolding around you. And you don't even know about it because you're just walking down the street. But hey, it was the sun that God put in the sky that cast the shadow on the sick. And so what God is doing around you, above you, um, you know, it surrounds you. It's when it hits you doing your everyday thing that those miracles occur. And that's how God gets the glory. Amen. It's because it's just you doing what you do. You're just being who you are. You're just doing what God's put in you today. You're just doing the next thing that the Lord put in front of you. You're just, you're just answering the call, whatever that is. And you think it's nothing and you think it's small. But God wants to encourage you today that you are working miracles that you know nothing about. And so just hold tight. Hold tight. Um, because, okay, so I'm the one who says who you are. I spoke it at the beginning of the world, before the birds sang and before the stars shone in the sky. You existed first in my thoughts. The salvation of man became so important to me. It was my number one focus. I had many things I wanted to accomplish, but people were always my priority. Make people your priority and you cannot fail. Love them into submission to me. Love always wins. Lord's given us a direction today, and I think it's just keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing is, is great. It's important. It's needed, 
And you might think I'm just burying this dead body day after day. I'm burying this dead body. I'm dying to the Lord day after day. And that feels like nothing. It feels like death. But when Joseph was surrounded by death, that dead body of Jesus, he had no idea the life that would come from it. For the rest of time, it was eternal. It, it, the, the weight of importance on this one man who simply waited for the kingdom of God. So while we wait, we're going to work, we're going to do. But that's not who we are, what we do. Who we are is who God um, created, right? He created you. He put all your pieces together. Hi, Francis. He put, he put everything about you together, sewn you, knit you in your mother's womb, just created you. And now he gives you opportunities to do things as you wait on him. That, doesn't that just make life easier? Doesn't that make this whole thing easier? We're just going to do the next thing he tells us to do as we wait on him. And that's it. And God will give you the burden. He'll give you the unction. He'll, he'll bring the increase. He'll show you the next step. He'll give you a vision. And, and all you've got to do is just keep doing what you're doing one day at a time. And so the Lord is good. And we're going to, I just, I love meeting with y'all. I love that God brings us together. I love his spirit first thing in the morning. It's strength. Doesn't it make you feel strong? Knowing that he's here and he's talking and he has a word in his in his in his word, he is the word, and it strengthens us. Oh my goodness. I feel so strong every morning now because I know he's brought us together to sit around this this fire <laughs> of his word and, and enjoy it. Oh, a campfire. Oh my goodness. I am uh, Jennifer. I'd see you sitting around a campfire with your people, enjoying, enjoying the goodness of God. So I'll, I'll bring the marshmallows. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, we're going to pray. We're going to pray that God would, he's encouraging us because we need it. Amen. We need encouragement and he knows that. And we're going to pray that we would, we would be encouraged and that encouragement would spill over into others as we wait on God and as we just keep doing that next thing. So in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, God, for my friends. And I thank you for your word that you brought to us today, Lord. That as we wait on you and as we abide in you, that you have not forgotten us. That, that time is no thing to you, God. What we think is forever. And what our flesh is crying out, I'm hungry. Feed me. Turn me again. I need something from you, God. That you already have it planned out. You already know. You're already doing. You're already working and going ahead of us. Amen. Amen. And so we praise you, God. And we thank you for your goodness and your blessings. And Jesus, Lord, I ask that you would continue to stir us up with the simple things, Lord. The simple things that aren't simple. The simple things that seem like nothing to us, but are so magnificent in the kingdom of God. I thank you, Lord, that just like Joseph had an unction to go and crave your body. Lord, you put that craving on him. And so, God, I'm asking you right now to release a craving on us for that next thing you would ask us to do that would be a help to you, that would serve you and serve your people. Lord, help us to love others into submission to you, God. Not that they would follow us, but that they would follow you, Jesus, that they would see you high and lifted up. Lord, forgive us for um, wanting to... To be the, the one that people follow. God, forgive us. If we've done that, for, if we've all done that, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. Because let us just point people directly to you. Let us be, God, that, that sign that says, go around me and go follow Jesus. Just keep going. Find Jesus. Look for Jesus. Lord, help us to have that word always in our mouth. Find Jesus. Have you have you seen Jesus? Are you following Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Can I talk to you about Jesus? Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Lord, I thank you for that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It, it's hard for me to pray with my eyes open because I want to just kind of get down, but I'm learning. And I'm learning how to, I don't know, bring others into that prayer, I guess, but... But what I say is, 
you know, um, there's all, when there's road construction, there's people on the side of the road and they're pointing people around the traffic jam and they're like, just keep going, keep going. I, I think that that's what the Lord is telling us our job is, is, you know, we're, we're pointing people around us. Keep going. Keep, keep following Jesus. Keep walking behind Jesus. Keep looking for Jesus. And we're just pointing folks that direction. They might get caught up in a traffic jam, but we're saying, nope, keep looking for Jesus. Keep going. Keep moving. Keep going. And so we're, we're like the, we're the ones on the side of the road just saying, keep, keep moving. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer, uh, cinnamon graham crackers. I'll do it. Okay. Amen. <laughs> That's awesome. I love y'all so much. I pray y'all have a great day and I pray healing. Fiona, we pray healing for you. Jewel, we pray healing for you knowing that God has, he bore stripes for our healing. Listen, he already bore it. He already did it. It is finished. And so we're going to walk in it. And while we wait, Know that God has not forgotten you. That that healing will manifest. It will be produced in your life. You will see it in your body. Because Jesus bore those stripes. Isn't it great that he took care of that? On his way to salvation. <laughs> to take over death. He thought, you know what? I'm going to get their healing in that too. I'm not going to forget about that. Because that's important. So he doesn't forget about anything. He takes care of everything. Yes. Amen, Connie. God is healing you. I believe it too. I believe he's taking you on a journey of healing. I think he has taken you in right exactly into the spiritual journey that he wanted you to go on. And that was just the, the path that he's he's chosen for you. Um, but you are overcoming that through through the word of your testimony, the blood of Jesus. You're an overcomer. And so you are God is doing amazing things in your life, Connie. And people are coming to Jesus because of your testimony. And because of your declaration of his healing power and your faith. So you keep walking that walk because God is moving for you and in you, through you. And, and it's not, he hasn't left you nor forsaken you. There's a reason. There's a reason why we go through what we go through. And it's almost always, I think, for other people. Amen. Because he made people his priority. And, and we can love them into the kingdom of God. Amen. Good morning, Sandy. Okay. All right. I feel good about today. I'm just renewed and refreshed. So keep doing it. God's going to put something on you. Amen. Hi, Brother Road Truck. We're praying. Y'all help us pray for Brother Road Truck because God's going to work a miracle in his voice. He had his his voice, uh, um, not your tonsils, your, um, ugh, I forget what they're called, but he needs his voice returned because he praises and shouts and Give such words of encouragement, but God is using him too. And when that miracle comes, amen, it's, it's going to turn the world upside down because <laughs> you're going to speak again. We believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I love y'all. Have a great day. I'll see y'all tomorrow at 5 a.m. Vocal cords. Thank you, Jennifer. Yes, you, you would think that would be easy, but I forgot. <laughs> so pray for Brother Rotrek's vocal cords. He, he needs a healing, but God's, God's already healed him of cancer. He's going to heal him of this too. So, all right. Love you. Bye.